Okay, I'm going to end with our first lab activity we're going to be doing. Okay, so this is something we're going to start today. And uh, the bulk of the data collection you'll finish today, tomorrow. It's, it's not a lot. It's very, pretty simple. But it'll be our first sort of take out about something like this, but also our first trial with entering stuff into a group. Well, that was kind of your first trial with the, with the good and bad. But, but this is more of a realistic example for how we'll be doing stuff. So, so I want to tell you guys a little bit about manta ray ecotourism. So manta rays are these really cool cartilaginous fishes. And here we're talking about giant mantas. So, the, so there, there's various uh, species. But here we're talking about um, uh, one of two of these big honking things, right? So the size of the desk you guys are at right now, right? Big, big suckers. Um, they're, they're iconic looking. They look like an alien. They look like nothing we were used to encountering on, on land. And uh, they, they might look a little scary. They're actually a filter feeder. So um, what we're looking at, this artistic rendering, we're looking down the mouth. And uh, they, so it, it's, a, it's a, a ray, it's a type of ray. But while most of our rays have a mouth that faces down to you know, eat uh, uh, shells or, um, or uh, uh, crabs or something of that nature, these guys are filter feeders. And so these uh, funky um, appendages in front of their mouths help direct water into their always open mouths. And it goes on their gill rakers. So one of my colleagues, one of our colleagues, um, has been studying, st has studied these individuals for her PhD, postdoc, et cetera. She has lots of money. She's spinning up her own independent company. These guys filter essentially microplastics from the water, right? They're not trying to filter microplastics. They're trying to filter phytoplankton but it's the same size as many of our small uh, microplastic pollution, which we'll talk about later in the semester. If you and I, if, if we try to filter some water with one of our fancy filters in the lab there with our fancy super expensive machine that, that, that fingerprints uh, microplastics, you know, chemically characterizes microplastics, we'd filter some stuff and pretty soon that filter would start to get clogged, right? All the little holes would get full of, of pieces of plastic. And then, it, it, and then water or liquid would, wouldn't go through that anymore. That's how we humans traditionally filter stuff. So then, after I filter, it depends on how dirty the water is or how, much, how many plastics are in the water, how, many, how much plankton is in the water, say a liter or two, and then it's going to be plugged. And then I got to take that off, put a new filter on. A liter or two of water, oh, take that off. These guys swim continuously. They can live up to 40 years. Ain't nobody changing their filters. So it turns out the physics of so how they've evolved for millions of years is to filter. And they have a constant. So we, it looks like, and this is this little blow up here, they have the, their, their gills have these sort of these ridges. And the water, unlike our filters, which go you know, through one side, through the material, and then come out the other side, with these individuals, the water sort of glances off. It kind of angles off. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. There's a constant uh, 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 coating of mucus. Say awesome. Awesome. Nice. I'm glad you guys like mucus so much. And I didn't have to prompt you about that. Um, so, so this mucus is constantly going over these gill rakers, and it's capturing the phytoplankton, it's capturing the small particles. Not 100%. Doesn't completely remove everything, but it takes a significant fraction out. And that, that sort of conveyor belt of mucus is constantly going, and then it goes and he swallows the mucus. And so it never clogs. And so this is one of the new potential technologies to help us with sewage treatment plants and things like that to do filtering of microplastics without having to constantly go through all this material and all this kind of stuff. So amazingly cool creatures. So we learn tremendous amounts from having intact, robust, biodiverse, healthy systems. This is but one example. Okay, so manta rays, so, so, so that's a little bit about microplastics and value to us. But just on their own, they're effing cool. They're crazy, right? I mean, this is awesome to be next to a giant animal like that that's just doing its due and, and cruising around. There are different areas around the world where, because of local geography and currents and this and that, these, in, these organisms concentrate. The global population, we don't know. The best estimate from a, a paper that came out a couple years ago is about 20,000-ish around the planet. So there aren't millions and millions and millions of these guys. So they tend to be concentrated in certain areas where uh, you know, it's good for them to feed and, and easy for them to eat, et cetera. Again, we're talking about the two species of giant uh, manta rays. Uh, and for our exercise today, 
Um, I want to talk about one of the best places in the world to see these, and this is on the big island of Hawaii. Um, and this is what they look like. So I'll, I'll play for you a little uh, thing where, um, so one year I brought you guys, I brought this class to Hawaii one year uh, for one of our classes. And so we, we spoke with a, a tourism guy. He's going to tell us a little bit about the story, so I won't spoil it for you. Suffice it to say, um, uh, people figured out that, um, so these guys, are, these guys are swimming around eating on phytoplankton. Uh, generally speaking, daytime, phytoplankton, not in the, or, or many of the phytoplankton that can swim, can control where they are in the water column, will tend to go deep. They kind of don't want to be in the light because then fish see them, eat them, gulp, 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 they die. Okay? So um, they go down. So at nighttime, they come up, they come shallower water because the shallow water, there's more nutrients, there's more things for them to graze on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and these, so these are not um, uh, phytoplankton, these are zooplankton, right? Because the zooplankton would need to be in the light in the daytime. Um, and so a lot of these planktonic critters are what we call positively phototactic, meaning they, they see a light source and they swim towards it. Evolutionarily, that was the moon, just like last night. We had a super bright moon last night, right? So the idea is that, that helps them cue on the right direction to go. So where they saw a bright light, they've evolved over millions of years. To, to swim towards the light. Well, uh, starting a few decades ago, um, some guys noticed at one of the, the piers in this part of Hawaii that there was a, there was a floodlight going on. You, know, you, can, you can imagine our parking lot over here, which totally ticks me off on, on Petrero, um, that we have these massive lights on, like 24 hours, a day, or not 24 hours, a day, but at night, right? It's great for safety when you guys are getting out of class, but I don't know why we have to have them on at 3 a.m., but we do, right? Because like. Because for public safety, like, we better have a light on. So on one of these piers, there was one of these downwelling lights, big street lights, right? So that people could see if they were going out night fishing or the dock was, right? And these guys noticed, hey, where that light was shining, there was a bunch of manta rays. So what was happening was the manta rays, because the phyto, because the, excuse me, the zooplankton were attracted to the light on the pier, the manta rays like, damn, dude, I can eat. Right? It's concentrating on my food. This is like a smorgasbord. It's like going to a free buffet and just eat, 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 eat. So these guys started going there, and the other people started going there. And then it essentially, um, you'll hear the story in a second, but it led to this industry. Now it's a full-blown thing. So this is what, now people artificially add light down underneath the water and point it up in the, up in the, you know, up towards the surface of the water. And this is very shallow. This is like in 15, 20, 25 feet of depth of water. And the manta rays just come on in. So it's like, no manta rays, click on the light, boom! It's like massive IMAX show right in front of you. And it has become tremendously popular. So here's a shot. So you see, here's from one dive boat, you see some people snorkeling over here, you see another uh, snorkeling group over there, and you just see all these boats out there. So when, I'm going to turn the lights down so we can see this a little easier. So when, my, when we were there, um, uh, we, we were on the cheap, so we were staying at hostels when I took uh, our previous class there. Um, but we went to the Sheridan, which is the, which is the uh, um, uh, big hotel, mm -hmm. and this is right off that hotel. So if I pick up a rock and throw it really, really far, I probably could hit the first boat. And so what we're looking at is we're looking out to the ocean. So I'm standing on the, on the inner tide on the rocks, and we're looking straight at the ocean. All those little lights are, a, um, are different uh, uh, dive boats. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, six. And then all of a sudden, boom, then the people eating there at the restaurant and drinking margaritas and Mai Tais and everything. So that's what that looks like. OK, this is the then head of tourism for the Big Island. And he gave a presentation to our class, and I recorded, I recorded some of it. So this is him just talking about manta, the, the manta ray ecotourism. And this was about, ooh, this is about seven years or so ago. Okay. So it started in the 80s? Actually, I don't remember it. No, it wasn't until, it wasn't until 2000 that they actually started doing it. Yeah. I had done, and 
this is my example. They're not running away from the people, they're actually coming towards them. It's, there's, yeah, there's always two sides of the story. And we're finding the same thing with golf. Golf is good to have a little bit. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so on the grand scheme of things, this is a relative, so he's right. So everything has, as we'll learn in this class, everything is a trade-off. So there's always a downside. Sometimes it's culturally, sometimes it's economics. It's, there's different ecological, different things. Um, but on the grand scheme of things, this is a relatively low impact thing, right? So to remind you, so for this place, which is off the Sheraton, is um, it's about a, I don't know, 10, 12 minute motor from the dock, from, from, the, from the harbor. So a person with a boat can have the boat tied up, bring everybody out just before sunset, walk them out, get the, get the paying customers on the boat, motor out for a few minutes, not use much gas, way less gas than typical boat tours, right? Where you're going for hours and everything. So use a little bit of gas, go out, uh, anchor up, hang out, watch the pretty sunset. Then as the sunset's going down, people put on their snorkel gear, if they're snorkelers, scuba gear, if they're scuba, if they're grandma, she can look over the side of the boat or look uh, if, there's, if it's one of the glass bottom boats and look through. So every, different ability levels can access this, right? If somebody's in a wheelchair and can't swim, they, there's still a, an opportunity for them to experience this. Um, and, and we're turning the lights on, right? And so, so we're not depleting the zooplankton population on the reef, right? And, and, and this is another case of the, the organism coming to us. We're not sort of harassing it, trying to tra track it down and all that kind of stuff. So it's not perfect. I'm not implying that, but, but it's relatively low impact. Most of the concern now is like from this picture, Yahoo's dropping an anchor on somebody else, uh, you know, a, a, a boat bumping into somebody else or somebody maybe is not good, uh, comfortable in the water, getting spooked and then bump, bumping into something. That, that's sort of the risk, right? It's sort of like a congested highway types of risk. But my question for you, what we're going to be doing for our lab is asking, hey, is there an economic benefit to this? Is this, is this a viable business? And so again, this is, this is uh, what it, it looks like if you're at this uh, fancy hotel and, and, and you can see as the sun is setting, you can see these boats right here, right off of the, um, right off of the uh, place. This is to orient you, this is the big island of Hawaii. And what we're talking about is this region of Hawaii. So we're talking about the west side of Hawaii. There's various places where these individuals congregate, but for the purposes of our lab today, we're just gonna focus on the, this main hot spot, which is right in this uh, red area. And so ultimately we're trying to, there's a few questions here, but the main question is, hey, does this work financially? Does this seem to be happening financially? And so what you guys are gonna do is you guys are gonna um, look on the web, see what the current information is, and then as much as you can get, in some cases you might be able to get just about all of it, but you can't get 100% of it, then you need to reach out to these two businesses um, either with email or give them a quick phone call, which is the easiest thing, and just sort of check in and get a little bit of the, the final little bits of information. Um, only two businesses, so it's only two things. It shouldn't take very long. So you guys have until tomorrow midnight to get them done, and then we'll pool the data. So let me uh, show you what this is going to look like. So this is also in our shared folder. And it's in the Manta Lab one. And so here it's in this spreadsheet. So um, let's have a look at it. This is data from the previous years. So we're on the, let's make sure you guys can see this tab. So we're on the uh, 2023 tab. And now that last exercise I did for you guys, it was kind of a little bit of a scrum. Like, oh, we're group two or three. So generally I won't be doing that for our data sheets. I'll try to lay it out so you guys have clear areas to type your stuff in. So it's not like everybody jumping on top of everyone. But in general, everybody look at me. This is the process, everybody look at me. Don't, and, and it doesn't, this is a very easy exercise to start. So it's not the end of the world if you do this. But it's best to get into the good habits right now. The general approach is gonna be this. Here's our shared data sheet. When we have one of our lab activities, I'm going to go make a copy of that on my local uh, drive, right? Duplicate it on my drive. Don't hit copy right here and make 15 copies inside our shared folder. I'm going to duplicate that into my drive, save a copy in my drive, either in your Google Drive if you're on like a, a mobile device, 
or ideally on your desktop, on your laptop, right? Save it on my laptop, gonna change the name, and then enter your data on that sheet, right? On your master sheet. That's gonna do, do two things. If we're all trying to type on this thing at the same time, it's gonna slow it down. And what tends to happen, we have this many people in a class like this. Um, somebody's gonna be going like, I'm gonna click on this, and then it's gonna be unresponsive. And like, three, three, it's not working, three. And then all of a sudden it's gonna go three, and it's gonna put like a whole bunch of threes in, right? And then somebody's data will get overwritten. And then when I go to grade it, I'm like, oh yeah, Ashley didn't, didn't, didn't enter a date. It's like, what, I totally did it. I'm like, nope, it's not here. So by having all your data entered in your master, you can just easily go back, recopy it, and paste it in if it accidentally gets, um, you know, nobody's gonna intentionally delete your data, but if it accidentally, some little hiccup like that happens. So the process, again, make a local copy. Make a local copy in your own personal drive or onto your desktop, the pr preferred thing. Do all the data entering there, and then when you're ready, just highlight the cells, go back to the master, and just do a paste. That's the best practice and then just archive that sheet. So if there is ever any question that you didn't get credit for something, we can go back and correct it. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at, at this. So what we have is, we have uh, everybody's name, uh, different assigned folks, right? And so I've done the first one as an example. And if you wanna see other examples, you can click on other years and see what ones that look filled out if you wanna see what the pattern is. So, so this, has, this is the name of the business. This is the website of the business. And then the phone number. So the phone number you call, because you probably need to call to ask them a couple questions. Um, you put it, put it in there, right? And then there's a series of questions. So it, almost all of these are in this region, so it's gonna be yes. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that we're part of a family and we wanna go on a, uh, on a snorkel with the manta rays the week of September 11th, right? Anytime that week. So we're gonna pretend we're, we're Joe Blow tourist and can we do that, right? So you're gonna look. Most of these websites have a calendar to book it right on the web, so you can mostly, for 90% of these, you can tell pretty easily. Some you might have to call and ask for, hey, do you guys have any availability this week, right? Um, but, so I'm gonna say, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, and, and the options that you're gonna put into each of the cells are in parentheses Right, so this is, the, this is the variable, and then these are the, you're gonna put in lots, some, little, or none. Meaning, uh, that week, are there lots of open slots? You know, lots of days with open slots, are there none, what, what have you? And then it's gonna be the price. What's the price of a snorkel, an adult snorkel trip? What do they charge? Uh, sometimes they'll also offer, offer scuba. If they do, write that price down but not everybody will offer scuba, but everybody will offer snorkeling at least. And then uh, how long is the experience? For most of them, it's about an hour, hour and a half. So that's the other brilliant thing about this is a business thing. So you do that, hardly, hardly spend any, any uh, fossil fuels to go out there. People dive, they go on a dive or a snorkel, and they're there for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever, pull them back in, you're back to the boat, and you're home for dinner, right? So you, you've done a whole charter, which normally would be like half a day and you'd be driving far away. So it, it's, 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 there's a lot of attractive things about a sustainable coastal business here um, for this particular type of ecotourism. Um, so we want to just wonder, hey, how long is it? How many passengers are on the boat? Is it like a cattle boat with like 180 people? Is it a small boat with about eight people? That kind of thing. And again, most of the stuff you could probably tell from the website. Uh, the things that you won't be able to tell from the website that um, you're going to have to call up and just ask is, uh, and I would just say, you know, I'll just say, uh, and I'll, I'll show you the script in a second, but I'll just say, hey, you know, uh, I just was calling up to see, just making sure you guys have availability, and I just was curious, um, uh, you know, uh, we're thinking about coming by, um, and I was wondering, is, is stuff has, has stuff gotten better from COVID? For the last several years, everybody's business was down, right? So it was hard to make a living. And just like we all know that our restaurants were struggling, same thing over there. So just, hey, is, is stuff back to the, the pre-pandemic times or, or yes, no, what have you? And then uh, just because it just happened, have you, this year, we've not asked this question before. We've asked these other questions in all the previous years. But so the question is just gonna be, hey, so is, have you seen, now this is the big island of Hawaii. The major devastation was on Maui, a different island but there were also fires on the Big Island, right? Not as devastating as the Lahaina fire, but nevertheless wildfires that destroyed property and stuff. 
So one of the questions is, hey, did people hear that Hawaii is burning and just bailed on it? And so they, they're not coming at all, even though this, this area is not impacted? Or, or was there no impact? Or maybe, there, maybe it's better. Maybe people bailed on Maui and are going to the Big Island because of the fires, right? So, so what is the impact of these things? Very, very important. These, these pandemics, these natural disasters, how is this impacting people's ability to make a livelihood? And then, and then uh, sometimes some of the boats shut down in September. So this is just if, if they have tours operating, right? So does that make sense? Okay, so all you guys got to do is, is fill these in for your, two, for your two rows. So everybody's been assigned two rows. There's a couple that have closed down that I've, I've sort of double checked. And so you'll see some like this one uh, is, 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 or somebody typed loss in there. Um, but there's a couple over here like, like these, these guys, have, this business is shuttered. And so, so they've gone out of business. But, um, but I believe the ones that I've assigned folks uh, are, are still in business. Does this make sense? Okay, so all you need to do for the data collection here is to look up your two dudes and fill them out and do that. Now, we have a really large class this year, so we kind of ran out. So the last couple folks, um, uh, I have, if, if you, so if this is one of you guys, or if you go to look for your business and your business is closed, if that, that could happen, that probably is going to be a few of you, you guys just come talk to me and I'll give you some alternative places we can look to find some other businesses, probably like in, in other, other regions. Make sense? So that's what you're going to do. So you're going to type that in. And for this data collection purpose, that's all you need to do. I will do a bunch of calculations this weekend once you guys type the data. I don't want to confuse you with how we're going to do that. I'll explain it to you after the fact. But, but as if you guys collect this data, we can make some estimates as to what's going on. OK? The last assignment for the, and this is all in week one, even though we're in week two. This is in week one in the lab section. So when you go to look for it, that's where this is. OK? if you want to go back and, and watch this video and other things like that, right, to review stuff. Um, let's take one quick look right here. So, um, so there's one other thing I want you to do also, which is very quick. So uh, I want you to type into chat GPT this prompt. Write me a paragraph describing the fiscal benefits or costs of manta ray ecotourism within the greater Kalua Kona region of the Big Island, uh, including references, right? And then, and then when you get your answer, you're, I'm going to scroll down to wherever my last name is, click right here, hit return, and, and, and paste my answer in. And we'll see, we'll see what, uh, and then we'll do our own version of this next week. But, but so, so for this lab, just got to look up these two businesses and do a chat GPT prompt, and then you'll get full credit for this lab, this part of the lab. Make sense? Okay, the last little bit, I'll just point out to you that here is a script. Oh, wait, where the hell did we go? Uh, where is it? Okay, right here, if I, if I click on this tab, this is, I mean, you can say what you want, right? You guys say, hey, I'm part of a class, we're doing a project, that's cool. Um, but we found over the years that a lot of times it's faster. Just, hey, just got a quick question. Um, uh, you know, uh, so if they don't have any booking, a lot of these guys have bookings, you can just get it off, off the website, but some of them don't. So just so we're consistent and somebody isn't asking one thing and somebody is asking something else, if you have to call up to ask for booking, just say, hey, so my family's thinking about coming, I'm just checking prices right now, I'm not gonna book, I'm not gonna pay for them, I'm just checking prices, availability, for two adults and two kids, right? That, that, that usually covers the, the price ranges of stuff. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, the other one that maybe is not on the website is uh, how, bit, how many passengers are on the boat. And just say, we're just curious if it's a big boat or a small boat or, you know, that kind of thing. And then, um, and, and there you go. And that's it. And then you're going to type your stuff in. If you guys are one of the groups that either you don't have one assigned, so we have so many students in the class right now, or if you go to do your business and you just find the business is totally closed, please indicate that the business is shuttered. But then... Um, uh, uh, I'll give you guys a choice. Uh, where would you guys like to look? Would you guys like to look in Indonesia or Mexico? Indonesia. Indonesia. Okay. So then, so then for the folks doing that, there'll be different dive operators, and, and you guys will just need to Google those and just, and just put the, the name of the establishment and, and stuff in. So, so all the other ones I've already, I've already pre-picked. The only additional thing is you guys just need to tell me the name and the, and the website. Does that make sense? Yeah. Questions? 
Okay, so first, let's make a couple quick predictions. What do you guys think is going to happen? What do you think we're going to find? You think we're going to find uh, business is, is back to pre-COVID? Yes? So, okay, that's right. So who thinks it's still down from before COVID? Just show a hand, quick show of hands, just out of curiosity. One, two, three, four, five. How many people think it's about the same? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many, how many people think it's better than before COVID? Oh, yeah, Steve, see, some people want, see, some people want to. Okay, cool. So good. So yeah, so when we do these things, it's a great thing to do that, right? And I'm not going to check your predictions. I don't, I don't particularly care. But when I say, hey, we're going to go do this lab activity, pause for a second. Hmm, I bet you X is going to happen. And just see, right? And so, so let's always have some kind of expectation, some kind of prediction in our head when we go to do this stuff. And we'll find out if we're right or not, right? Sound good? Questions? Anybody have any questions for me?